Hey, it's Sean and Mike, BrewDashNews.com. I love the bar. I hey. love the bar. You built this, what, in uh, March of 2020? Yeah, about a year ago. So, like, pandemic was here, and I, we needed something to do with my kids. Uh, do some power tools. Okay, so we were locked down. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you yeah, built you know, this. we were fully locked down. Okay. I thought you built it, and then, nope. therefore, we couldn't use it for the, the old show. No, I built it during the lockdown. And then that's the reason why we had the pandemic. <laughs> um, hey, so... Like I said, I brewed a New England style IPA. Uh, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll just we'll say it's a New England style IPA, and uh, I'm calling this Brew Dude Johnny's Fairly Hoppy New England style IPA. This is a five gallon batch, uh, 19 liters. The water chemistry. Now I know that uh, Mr. Janish was uh, doing his uh, 150, yep. 100. Um, because we have so much uh, <laughs> chloride in our water, I take, I do like half distilled yeah. and uh, kind of break down the sodium, which is a big problem. For the viewers at home, uh, our chloride level is about 260. Yes. So I do like half and that brings it down. And then I just add enough um, uh, gypsum to get the sulfate up because we have very low sulfate, yeah, if any. But the chemistry is uh, 70 ppm of sulfate to 140 ppm of chloride. So Sounds right. Two to one. That's what I was going for. And I threw in a cabin tablet just to, you know. And take care of that chlorine. Yeah, the tap water is also goes through a filter to clear yeah. up that. Well, you get all your brewing water from your neighbor's pool anyway, right? <laughs> That's how I roll. It's free. You know, yes. <laughs> I'm not paying for it. Okay, so the ingredients as are as follows. Uh, 10 pounds, 4.5 kilograms of Brees Pilsen malt. I like Pilsner malt in my, uh, just because the color is a little bit lighter. Yep. Uh, 1.5 uh, pounds, uh, 0.68 kilograms of flaked wheat. We learned so much about flaked wheat in our last uh, comparison of flaked grains. So I had an extra half pound, mm -hmm. threw that in. Yeah. And then uh, one pound of flaked oats, that's 0.45 kilograms. That's mm -hmm. a very simple mm -hmm. grain bill. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I get freaked out about boiling wort for 60 minutes without any hops additions, <laughs> I put in seven grams or a quarter ounce of citra hops just at 60 hey, minutes. Just throw one pellet in to feel good about it. <laughs> You know, it would. It would make you yeah. feel better. Uh, with 15 minutes to go in the boil, a pound or four, uh, 0.45 kilograms of cane sugar. Yeah. Just to dry out yes. the finish. And then here we go. We did uh, two. We did a hop stand. We did one hop stand. And then we did two dry hop additions. And they went as follows. Uh, the hop stand, I, I split the difference between the Scott Janish. That was one thing yep. I learned. I split the difference at yeah, yeah. Uh, 192 degrees Fahrenheit or 89 okay. degrees Celsius. I did uh, two ounces of Ella hops, one ounce of Vic Secret, and one ounce of Rakow or Rakow? Rakow hops or, yes, Rakow hops. Um, and I'll tell you why I did that after I get through okay. all the different hop additions. Uh, at day three of fermentation, another charge of Ella hops, one ounce, one ounce of Vic Secret, two ounces of Raku hops. And then day seven, Ella hops, Vic Secret, Raku, the only one ounce of Ella, one ounce of Raku, and two ounces of Vic Secret. So just kind of like shift it around. All right. I love how you're juggling those just guys. Just juggling. I think it's so, and then the, the starting gravity was 1064, ended at 1014, Y East, 1318, uh, London, AL3, since he was using it, and I bought two packets, and so that's what we have here. Uh, the mash was for 60 minutes at 155 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, great. Whatever. Um, and uh, that was for, you know, an hour, like I said. And that's really it. Fermentation was at um, 60 degrees, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius for two weeks, um, and uh, no, no, uh, no keg hopping. It's all right here for all you. from the hop stand. It's all for, it's for the hop stand, yep. and it's from the actual additions in during fermentation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that is that. So for the hop, like like I've had these hops for a while. Um, Bissell Brothers Reciprocal is a big inspiration. Uh, I can't find Australian summer hops anymore, mm -hmm. um, but they use uh, Vic Secret and Ella and Summer. But I think there's a nice combination, like for uh, Reciprocal is a, a special beer. <laughs> yeah. And so what I was going for with the Ella, kind of a spicy thing, 
uh, you know, the Vic Secret is kind of galaxy, kind of this tropical, but like s s more subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's a great way to describe it. Rack the Racco hops, the the full orchard. I wanted to get more like you know stone fruit berry sort mm -hmm. of, yeah. just like an overall yeah. fruity character. Yep. And so you know, kind of like a, almost like a candy sweetness to it, like at least, you know, yep. like simulated yep. in the aroma and the flavor. Yep. So what do you think of this beer, sir? Uh, I find that the, I'll just start on the hop end of it. I found that when we first poured it, there was a pretty good puff of aroma. Mm. Um, I've got to swirl it and sort of cap it here to capture that aroma. But there's definitely a uh, very pleasant, like uh, floral, muted fruit type of character there. Um, it's, a little, it's more pronounced on the palate as a, when you drink it as a flavor component. Mm. And for me, it's actually, it's, there's, there's a, um, like a, uh, a, a gummy bear like sweetness to the, yeah. like when you say like a candy sweetness, I really actually get that, whatever that, you know, that, that sweetness sensation you get from certain gummy bears, right? Um, actually, even like the white, the clearer gummy yeah, bear, yeah, that's yeah. sort of really what it is. Yeah. But, but it's backed by a little bit of fruit. At one point I hinted, I got like almost what seemed like uh, a mint like like experience towards the end, which I think is the uh, you mentioned. I think in the Ella, the yeah. Oba like quality, yep. and, and I like that. It's like this strange little hint towards the back of it after you swallow it, and you you know you're absorbing it. All of a sudden, there's a little bit of that. Maybe on the exhale, there's like a little bit of that herbal quality. So it's nice, and I like that play of. Uh, getting yourself a little fruit character, but having something else there, whether it be something floral, something herbal, something spicy. Sure. Um, I like having that mix of, of presentation. The rest of the beer itself, um, it's a little bit lighter in color yep. than, um, or I shouldn't say it's lighter in color because it's hard to say. It has to do with the haze. The haze is less intense than yeah. in the, yep. in the, 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 the your Janish uh, version of it. But um, but the body, the mouthfeel is um, it's crisper, yeah. it's cleaner, it swallows easier. It's uh, it's pretty tasty. I, I think it's pretty tasty. Um, it, it, I think the drinkability is higher. But that's just me and my the way I perceive uh, the hopping, you know, and the and the and the you know. It also has to do with the mashing and the and the water treatment there. Um, I like this, and, and actually a little bit of sugar adjustment in there too to help give you a, a, a more drinkable uh, presentation. Yeah, I think that's, I, I think that what I was going for were hops mm. um, that presented more fruity yep. flavors. Like it does, it's not like a juicy bomb. No. It is no more fruit. like, like yeah. a candy fruity mm -hmm. flavor. Yep. Yep. And um, I don't know, I was like, when I was drinking it, like of course I had some time between, you know, now and when it was ready in the keg, which was about two weeks ago, yep. um, and I was drinking it side by side, and and certainly I I noticed the difference in body between the Janish and mine. I was yep. like, hmm, is that a bad thing? Like it just seems like so much thinner. I don't think so. Than this. It does seem so much thinner than that. Yes. But drinking it on its own, being unbiased to that, I still think mashing at 155. The malt body is still there, but that sugar addition gives you a drinkability. There's a dryness to it that it finishes drier, mm. and I like that. And do you think the flaked versions of those grains um, come through well? I think that it does add some body, some... I mean, it's certainly giving you the haze. I mean, that's yes. where the haze okay. is coming from. For me, in these, this style of beer, I like seeing... I think I think the true like those orange juice photos, that level of haze makes for some very sexy beer photography, right? <laughs> but those beers for me on the palate and gastrointestinal, just just taking those beers in, yep, right. There is a quality to them that I love the flavor from a beer nerd standpoint, but from a drinkability standpoint, I actually like the way we do this, and I think what we're doing with our we're trying to make flavor and aroma forward IPAs that don't necessarily directly sing to the New England IPA thing, aside from trying to be flavor and aroma forward. But what we're really striving for here in the beer itself is a little bit sort of West Coast, drier, crisper, um, hmm. easier to drink. I think yeah. uh, for me, when I think about how I've been brewing these beers and how they present themselves to me, um, that's definitely what... I think is happening there for yeah. me. The pendulum is swinging a little bit. I find these beers 
to be extremely interesting from a beer geek standpoint. Sure. Right? And I love all the science that goes into it, and everybody's working really hard to try to make this happen. Um, but for me, at the end of the day, I'm going to drink that and go, wow, this is so cool and it's so interesting. And I, like I said, the sexiness of the pictures is great. <laughs> Your Instagram But feed. this, but to me, I mean, this is, this is like Belgian wit level haze, which is awesome. Yeah. I love it. So this is like Belgian wit. This is the same color as a Belgian wit. And it's got the same level of haze as a Belgian wit. But it's got an American hop profile to it that in, a, in a, an American New England IPA, uh, yeast profile to it that I love. So it's bringing in several different aspects of things that I love, and I could I would drink three or four pints of this. There you go. Well, I guess I know who I'm inviting over to my house because I need. <laughs> I think it's I think it's just different strokes for different folks. No, I agree. And uh, I I love brewing and I love all the science that goes into it, but I also love all the art that goes into it. Right. This is us. Yeah. Taking what we love about these beers. And really honing in on what we're saying about something. these beers, Yeah, sure, right? sure, sure, sure. Like sitting on your deck out back, <laughs> not my deck when the sun goes down. My deck sucks when the sun goes down. <laughs> but your deck when the sun goes down is, is, is awesome. Yeah. I definitely drank three or four of these, and you can make me some burgers, get me some chips. Sure. I'll slap it around. Maybe a little but, salad. So just for the folks at home, uh, you know, his deck faces west, <laughs> mine faces, uh, like, southeast. Yeah. <laughs> so there, I have, like, a, like, a, like it's almost like you can, like, Set your watch to when the shade starts to roll across. You want to brunch across. at my house yes. in the morning. It's beautiful out there. And you want to dine at his house. Yeah, let's, let's uh, actually set up a neighborhood tour. We should. <laughs> Start 9 a.m., finish, you know, 4 p.m. at mm -hmm. mine. Um, anyway, thank you for, you know, being a, um, you know, semi-non-biased <laughs> observer of these, <laughs> of these beers. Uh, I was really psyched to brew this. I had seen. I love it. I had I seen do. the the Janish uh, recipe in that uh, uh, issue in BYO, and certainly had seen on you know different internet forums people uh, sharing uh, a PDF of you know his recipe, and that's where I took the inspiration from. And I wanted to brew it as as closely to the recipe as I could, uh, and when I and I did. And then I, I had had this in my mind for a while. Certainly the things that we had put on the internet regarding flaked grains uh, helped to shape that a little bit. I did take, I, I, I lied, I guess I did take a little inspiration from the hop stands. The hop stands, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of this whole experiment, yeah. right? The cool thing about this beer is how there's this guy out there, Scott Janish, who's really dug in and done a lot of work around hops and the modern IPA. Yep. And a recipe gets published, and you can bring that into your brew house, your system, and basically make a pretty legit clone of, of what that was, not just because it's a recipe, but because it really works scientifically. Yeah. And it came together to create probably the closest version I think we've ever had at home to name your top 20 New England IPA brewers that are close to us yes. that probably most of our viewers have never even heard right, of. Right, 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 right. This is right there with the rest of mm. them. It's great. It's it's yeah. a it's, so that's the cool thing about what you've done here, to replicate something that's in print, um, and you you're able to do it, taste it, and actually feel the science in it. <laughs> right, science. Um, yeah. Then you do what we've been doing, which is this, and I think yeah. there's still plenty of fun to be had trying to find somewhere even in between here. There's things I love about this, there's things I love about this. What I love about home brewing is saying, let me take the things I love about these two things and see and if I can make together. them one. True that. Uh, yeah. So, so like, I, I, guess, I, I guess what I would say is I would always add hops at flame out. Always. And this was, I will just chill the wort a little bit mm -hmm. to a certain temperature mm -hmm. and then add the hops. Yeah. So hop standing is something that I know you haven't done a lot of, especially with that type of control. And, and yeah, it's definitely way to go. Yeah, because I would just I would just say like, all right, oil's over, hops in. Yeah. Start you know sit. Yeah. Let that sit. Actually, it was like I'd actually let it sit for like a half an hour and mm -hmm. then start my chill. Mm -hmm. But this was more of a, hey, we're gonna chill it down to a certain temperature. We'll let it sit for ten minutes and then we'll chill, and then we'll you know put it in the fermenter and we'll you know get yep. going so yep. all right well thanks sir hey if you like home brewing we've got the channel for you <laughs> you want to subscribe to this channel uh if you like new england style ipas or just kind of this content if you just 
like that we're, you know, in the same room together talking and uh, not looking like we're speaking from an outdoor prison. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Um, we try to do this every week, so certainly subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you want to be notified when we post things, you know, bash the bell. What do they say? What do the kids Smash say? Smash the bell. Smash it. Yeah, do something with that bell. But John and Mike, brew-news.com. Brew on. Cheers.